this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 44 of the Sophie Art Podcast which is a little podcast I do about art and things and this one is going to be all about studying with svslearn.com which is, stands for the Society of Visual Storytelling so that's the main topic but we've also got the little art tip which is going to be about coming up with ideas, uh, coming up with colour palettes for paintings. We've got book book number eight, which is Keys to Drawing by Bert Dodson. And then the fascinating fact number three is going to be about learning new skills. It's to do with something called data, (laughs) knowledge retention or something, distributed practice. It's called distributed practice. I'm also going to, at the end, talk about a little meditation that I had yesterday. A little meditation experience that I had, which involves an orgasm. (laughs) So that's going to be right at the end. Save the orgasm for the end. (laughs) That's quite funny. Um, But you can find show notes and everything at sophielawson.com. And you can find videos at youtube.com slash sophielawson. So if we get into the main topic which is all about svslearn.com I've got like a thousand things I would love to talk about and really all I would say is if you want to learn how to draw or if you want to improve your drawing skills your painting skills anything to do with illustration really I would so recommend joining this course because you well you can get us three seven days like a trial for seven days for free so you can you can try it out and see if it is for you but i just love this website i've been using it now for about two months and it is svslearn.com which stands for the society of visual storytelling and what it is is it's a, a website with just over 80 different courses covering all all types of things to do with creating art and it, the website was created by Will Terry, Lee White and Jake Parker. And I actually found I found this site when I started Inktober. So I've only, I only recently found it about well, about three or four months ago. And once, once Inktober was finished, I then basically started going into this website. And I've been wanting to do this podcast for ages. But I've kept putting it off because it's one of those things that I... I realised quite quickly that I loved this site and I wanted to share it but like I wanted to do it justice and so I kept putting it off and I, I, I thought now I'm just going to do it because <laughs> otherwise I'll never get it done. So the sort of flow that I've got for this one is I'm going to talk about what SPS Learn is which I think I've already done <laughs> and then I'm going to just cover some of the courses that they offer and explain the courses I've done and how I found them and then I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why I love SPS Learn and then I'm going to talk about a little little tip thing that I've got about how I learn it's just like the way I learn because I thought it was quite I thought it might be quite handy and then I'm going to talk about final thoughts so if we start with the courses so they they say on the website that they've got over 80 course, um, 80 videos, but I think they've got more than that now, because on the podcast they've also got a podcast at three point. It's called Three Point Perspective, which you can also find on this web on SVS Learn. But they said they said on there that they've now got like over a hundred. There's so many courses on here, but they've done something really good because they they've sort of taken some of their some of their courses and put them into little levels which they've called curriculums so they've got like level one level two level three level four and what that means is if because it can be a little bit overwhelming when you first come to this website because there's so many courses you you don't know where to start unless you know what you want to do it could be a little bit overwhelming so they've done this little curriculum thing and level one has the fun the following courses it's how to draw everything Drawing fundamentals, creative composition, and then light and shadow. So what you what you could do is you could 
basically work through the, the curriculum. This is what I'm doing. I'm starting by working through the curriculums. And then once I've done that, I'm going to move into just like exploring the courses on my own. So that was level one. Level two's got visualising, drawing, perspective, beginning Photoshop, 10-step digital painting, creating custom brushes in Photoshop. Level three is mastering perspective, the colour, the magic of colour, posing characters, and painting in Photoshop. Level four is painting, texture and details, stylized human characters, visual storytelling techniques, and creative environment design. So I think that shows you how they, they're covering like so many different parts of the drawing process. But what's really good is they've also created like business a business curriculum as well so this website doesn't just have courses on how to draw and how to paint and stuff it's also like the business side of it as well and again they've broken this down into curriculum and like level one for that is how did they get how did they get their start and it talks about the founders of SVS talk about their origin stories then you've got how to perfect your children's book portfolio how to get your first 10k followers, branding for creatives, and then level two is portfolio, portfolio and self-promotion, all about contracts, everything you ever wanted to know about agents, the business of children's books, and level three has how to make money in illustration one, two, and three. But the thing is, you, you, you don't have to do any of that. If you, This is what I love about SVS Learn. You can... You can do whatever you want. So if you're only interested, if you was only interested in the business side of things, you could come on here and just do that, and hopefully that would improve your like business skills. But if you've got no interest in that, you can just focus on the art stuff. And I really like that they've done that. But what they've also got is all the courses are just like th thrown on this page, so you can basically just do what you want. And there's a search bar at the top so you can search for something. But there's courses on like how to ink, gesture drawing, figure drawing, brush pens, different types of painting, sketchbooks. Like honestly, anything that you want to learn to do with art is going to be on this website. And what is really good and what I love about this SVS Learn, which makes it, I think, different to other learning sites because I've I've tried studying with Proco.com, which I really love Proco. He's Stan Prokopenko. He basically um, he does more like figure drawing and stuff like that. And I love him. He is he's who introduced me to gesture drawing. But with Proco, when I was last on it, I think he's updated it a little bit. But it was basically only like Stan Prokopenko on that site. I think he's recently added started adding new artists um, and then there was also I did paintable.cc but that one was only focused on digital painting and then I also have I've also tried controloutpaint.com which I love that I love all of these but they're all focused on just one type um, control alt paint was like focused on digital but SVS learn is covering everything and you would think maybe that because it's covering everything it's not going to do any of it any good but the secret they've got is it's not just one person doing it there's like so many artists involved in this so you've got like Jake Parker, Will Terry and Lee White they're doing most of the videos but you've also got like I guess it's their artist friends and stuff like that so you've got like somebody called Peter Han who does brush pens Stan Prokopenko is actually on here. David, Holm, Ben, Gina, Anna, Pippa, Jamie, Sterling. There's just tons of different artists. So what this means is that each art each artist can sort of focus on on what they're teaching. So you it's not like every, it's not like you've got these three artists trying to do everything. I think they've been very clever in doing that. But what is also really good is that because it's all these different artists, they've all got different styles. And so like some of them, because I've so far I've studied from 
I think I've done four courses so far. Um, so far I've finished creative composition, light and shadow, sculpting for character consistency, drawing fundamentals and how to draw everything. And I'm currently working through mastering perspective. And like some of them, some of the courses will be very structured and like everything will be broken down into chunks and easy to work through like like that but then some of them will be very theory based where it's more like lectures and like so some of them will be like they're talking to you one to one but some of them will be like you're inside of a classroom and there's they've actually those ones are recorded in like a live studio <laughs> well not a studio but they're recorded in front of webcams with live and a live audience so that means you get like people asking questions and stuff I personally prefer the more structured ones just because then things are broken down and I find it easier to study when things are broken into chunks but I, I love all of them and it's just quite refreshing to go into each course and it feel different and I mentioned there that I've done sculpting for character consistency and that's something else I love is I would never have thought about doing sculpting but I I randomly saw that course and I, I clicked on it. I just finished curriculum level one and I thought I'm going to try something a little bit different before I go into like curriculum two. So I clicked on this sculpting video and then the next thing I know, I've bought myself a load of clay and I've created a little clay sculpture of Lil Sophie, <laughs> which I absolutely had so much fun with that. And it's something I think I'm going to start doing now is trying to create little um, clay characters because he talks about in that video how a good way to understand your character is before you even start drawing it is once you've like sketched out the idea is to turn it into a little sculpture and then you can rotate it see it from all different angles and with different light sources and stuff so this is something else is because there's so much content on here you're going to learn things that and find things that maybe you would never have found because you would never have gone out looking for it it's going to come to you but again if you don't want to do any of that you can focus on what you want so it, I just love it for that but something that I've learnt from the courses I've done even with the sculpting one is they've all had a very similar message which is to start simple and then add the details later so it's it's really nice to keep hearing that same message because I am le starting to realise, I'm, I'm noticing that I am starting to take this this in because I'm starting to, when I'm doing my drawings and sketches, I'm starting very simple like they recommend and it is really working. So there's something else that I, I love about this svslearn.com and that is that it has forums. So you can actually go into the forums and talk to other students taking the courses and you can like share your work and get feedback but you can also if you're struggling with stuff like just ask for help and it doesn't have to be necessarily like art focused it can be things to do with it because because what I did was after that I did a podcast a couple episodes ago about planning and after recording the episode I kind of I kind of lost it a bit because I, I realised that I was doing well I didn't realise but I real I realised that something wasn't right. I kind of spoke about it on the podcast how I wasn't getting enough sleep. So I went onto the forums at SVS Learn and I just wrote a little post like asking for help really on how to get the balance between like planning, learning, drawing and also sleeping and doing everything. And there was um a user on there called Ness. And she just really gave me the best advice where she she made me realise that I was trying to do too much too soon. And I think the way I was doing the planning was good because I was breaking things up into blocks and putting everything into blocks of time. And I think that was a really good thing. But what I had done was I had put too many things into these blocks. And she basically just said to me that like you've got to do the baby steps. So you've got to... She made me realise that I've got to do less things <laughs> first. Um, 
because if you do less things you're going to be able to do more things which is quite funny and so like just going onto the forums it helped me so much and since then I've changed slightly how I'm doing things so I've started sleeping an hour earlier and I've put my studying an hour later so I, I now have an extra couple of hours to sleep and just those extra couple of, couple of hours has really helped so like even if you didn't sign up to the courses I would really recommend joining the forums because the forums are totally free and you, do, you don't need to be on the courses it's just if you're on the courses you can all sort of like work along together and get help but the cor the forums are just amazing just on their own really and that's something I, I love so the, the thing is I could just keep going on and on and on about this svslearn.com because I really do love it and I, I just I feel like it's going to help anyone who wants to improve their art skills but all so all I would say is just give it a go really it's svslearn.com they have like I said a seven day free trial but it's actually not that expensive it's you can either subscribe to it for a year or monthly so monthly it's $25 which I think works out about £18 so £18 a month for all of this like knowledge is just amazing it's so much value for money really and I think once you try it for those seven days you, you will just you'll be hooked I think so that is svslearn.com highly 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 recommended and I'm so glad that I found it and I just I really recommend it so that's svslearn.com and that sound means it's time for this week's little art tip and this one is all about a little tip on how to come up with colour palettes for doing paintings so something I sometimes struggle with is coming up with a bunch of colours to do a painting like a digital painting especially so what I've done is what I've realised is you can turn photos into colour palettes and I've managed to find two websites that do this the first one is canva.com slash colour dash palette and the other one is palettefx.com and I'll put links to both of those in the, in the show notes but what this allows you to do is you can take any photo and upload it into this website and it will turn that into a bunch of little colour palettes. It will like pull out the most used colours in that painting or in that photo and it will show you little squares of colours which I think is amazing because what you can do is you can basically take those little squares, put them into Photoshop and then use that as the starting point for your painting as like a way of coming up with colour palettes so what I thought was because I have so many um, pieces of artwork that I love from other artists if I look at one and I think I love the colours in that what I could do is I can now go onto one of these websites and it will turn it into a bunch of colour palette uh, like a, a colour palette it will turn it into a bunch of colours which I can then move into Photoshop but what's really good about this is on the palettefx.com one it not only turns it into little colour palettes but if you click on one of those colours it will actually show you colours that are like in harmony with that colour so say for instance there's a painting that you love and it's got a blue in it that you really love you can using that palettefx.com it would pull out that blue and then you could click on that blue and it will show you other colours that are like in harmony with that colour so you could and then the good thing is you can click on one of those colours and it will show you colours that are in harmony with that so you could actually start creating your own colour palette based off of that one blue from the original painting so I just think this is a really really little <laughs> a really fun way of and an easy way as well of coming up with ideas for colours and it's you might not even use them but it will just inspire you for types of colours that go together so that's this week's little art tip it's a fun little way of coming up with colour palettes for doing paintings really this week's book book is Keys to Drawing by Bert Dodgson 
which is one of my all-time favourite books. I don't currently own it, as I've I lent it out to somebody and I still I haven't got it back. But I love this book so much, and it's Keys to Drawing by Bert Dodgson. It's the book I first started learning how to draw from in 2013. And the thing with this book is, again, like svslearn.com, I could, I could go on for ages about how much I love this book. But really, I would just say, if you want to learn how to draw, and you want to learn how to draw from a book, I would say get this book. Because what it managed to do for me was it, it, it showed me that anyone can learn how to draw because all you've got what this book shows you is that all you've got to do is change how you see and if you change how you see you'll be able to draw because you you'll realize that everything is just a shape and if you can draw a shape then that means you can draw anything so this book just gave me the confidence that i could draw anything really so what i'll just list the chapters in the book You've got the drawing process, the artist's handwriting, proportions, taking the measure of things, the illusion of light, the illusion of depth, the illusion of texture, pattern and design, and drawing and imagination. And what I loved about this book was it it covers pretty much everything to do with drawing. It doesn't do anything about colour theory or anything like that. But if you want to learn how to draw, this book just covers everything. And even though it's covering everything, he covers it in such simple way. It's so easy to understand and it just makes sense. And again, like I said, it, it somehow, it really gives you confidence that you can draw anything. And something that I think helps with that is somebody once emailed me saying that they had got this book, but they they couldn't. Or they didn't want to get into it because they didn't like the style of the of his sketches inside, and I kind of agree because his his sketches are very scribbly like and rough, and so you might look at them and think, "I don't want to draw like that, but I actually realized that it was ingenious because what he's done is because his his drawings they're very sketchy and just scribbly, it kind of means that when you sit down to start learning how to draw you realize it doesn't matter what it looks like when you're learning all that matters is that you are learning and and doing your best sort of thing so because he's got very sketchy drawings in in this book again that kind of just loosened me up really um so i i saw that as a i ended up seeing that as a positive actually i've done like a blog post about this book which are linked in the show notes and I've given like examples of some of the exercises because the book has got an amazing flow to it where there's loads of little exercises throughout each chapter and they're fun little exercises as well and then at the end of each chapter he he like does this thing where you self-critique yourself so it's just got a really nice like way of learning and teaching and repetition about it which I just think it really helps you learn and another thing that's amazing about this is I first studied from it in 2013 when I I didn't know nothing and you could say I still don't know nothing but back then I knew more nothing and then I went back in 2016 and I re-studied from it and I learned so much more because I think I realized that sometimes when you're learning stuff you can't take it all in because sometimes I think you need to you need to learn something else before you can learn this other thing. So I think it's good to go back to it as well. So again, what that made me realise was that this book isn't just for somebody who's never drawn before or drawn before. It's also amazing for somebody who has been drawing for a few years. So I, I just feel like this book is pretty much amazing and if somebody come up to me and said you're only allowed one book for the rest of your life well if they said one art book for the rest of your life it would be this one because i just know that it's just gonna it's a book that keeps giving really if they said you're only allowed one book i'd probably have to say joe Dispenza's book breaking the habit of being yourself but then saying that 
the only reason I bought that book was because of this book, because after studying Keys to Drawing by Bert Dodgson, like I said, he, he made me believe that I could learn how to draw, and then it was that that made me buy Joe Dispenza's book, because I wanted to... I think this book, really, is the first time in my life that I started realising that I could actually do something. <laughs> it's a very powerful book, this, so it's highly recommended, and it's book book number eight, Keys to Drawing by Bert Dodson. And... <laughs> That means it is time for fascinating fact number three, and it's actually to do with learning, and it's something I just recently found out about, and it's called, what is it called? It's called distributed practice, and what it is, is it's, they have scientifically proven, and I'll put links in the show notes to all of this, but they've proven that learning that is spaced out over time drastically increases knowledge retention so what that means is if you the best way to learn is to learn in chunks and that's something i said about with svs learn i kind of noticed this sort of subconsciously and it's that if i i guess everyone is different but for me if i learn in chunks i seem to like learn it a lot better and i actually forgot to talk about this in the SVS learn section but something I do in a way that I like learn things I guess what I do is I think I wrote it down somewhere yeah the way I learn is what I with SVS learn I will firstly watch the video so say it's a 30 minute video I'll just watch the video without doing anything but watching it I will then straight away after watching it I'll re-watch it but as I'm watching it I'll pause it and scribble down notes and then once I've scribbled down the notes, I will turn the video off and I'll rewrite my notes onto another piece of paper. Because I, I think if I'm doing that, I'm repeating the the knowledge over and over again. And so like the more you repeat something, the more you chance you've got of learning it. And what I then do is any practice exercises that they've said to do in the course, that's what I'll do in bed before I go to sleep which I can also do whilst listening to lucid dreaming so that kind of works quite well and then the next day what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll try to remember what I had learnt without looking at my notes and then once I've like got all that I can I'll look at my notes and see if there's anything I forgot and I'll keep doing that until I can remember everything without looking at the notes and I feel like that's quite a good way of like remembering things really but you can also do that with books so instead of what I do with the books is I do it page by page so I'll do I'll read one page I will then take notes and then I'll copy my notes down and then I'll move on to the next page so it's all about like breaking things down and that seems like that's what this distributed practice is it's breaking down what you're learning into little bits of time so instead of sitting there for like 10 hours trying like learning something they recommend it's better to do it in say two three hour chunks um, and then over time you're going to learn you're going to retain that knowledge much better but to me that is a kind of fascinating fact because you would think that the best way to learn is to just go all in and learn loads at once but it's not like that. It's they've proven that it's better to learn less, <laughs> learn less, but you're going to end up learning more. <coughs> Fascinating fact number three. I'm going to quickly talk about a little meditation thing that happened yesterday, because this was just unbelievable. Really, I I never realised that you could have an orgasm in a meditation. <laughs> so. I've recently started doing this thing called halotropic breathing, which I heard about this on the podcast, and they said how if you do halotropic breathing, you can actually have like psychedelic experiences without doing any like hallucinogenic drugs. You can get a psychedelic experience just by breathing, which I thought to myself, that's not 
that sounds impossible. How can breathing, like, do something like that? So I looked into it, and it's, it is actually a thing. And um, so what you do, what you do is, I'm, I would recommend looking up the video, and I'll, I'll link to a video that I've been, like, studying from, in the show notes. But basically, halotropic breathing, is what you have to do is, for an extended period of time, you have to breathe like this. You have to breathe like. <sighs> So you have to breathe without any spaces in between any of the breaths and you have to do that for well like some people can do that for like hours and at the moment it's very hard to do it it's at first I could only do about five minutes and I had to stop because it was not only it was uncomfortable but yeah it just felt really uncomfortable but I managed over time to get it up a bit and I've now at first I got up to about 12 minutes and now I'm getting up to like yesterday I did 27 minutes before I had to stop because it was a bit uncomfortable but I'm trying to do 30 minutes because that's what he recommends in this video is to start with 30 minutes and try to build up to two hours so what I did was I I got up to 27 minutes and I was starting to get these like tingling feelings in my arms which is something he said would happen kind of like a pins and needly thing, feeling but when I stopped doing the breathing I felt very weird like sort of lightheaded I guess it, I guess what you're doing is you're moving the oxygen into your head and the reason I say is to watch his videos because he does say that it can be quite dangerous and they also said that on the podcast so y- you have to like make sure you're doing it right and stuff like that but what I, what I thought was I'm going to do this breathing and then go straight into a meditation afterwards, into a hemisync meditation. And with the hemisync meditations, it's like these binaural beats. Um, and they're supposed to be able to trigger like out of body experiences and stuff like that. So I did that breathing yesterday. I then went straight into my halo- into my hemisync. And the strangest thing happened whereby The meditation started and she was talking, but like normally I don't see anything for until she has stopped talking. But right away, right from the very beginning, I started seeing this. It was like a purple or blue glowing thing in front of me, and I was I was thinking, what is that? And at the same time, I started seeing these like green green energy waves. As if they were coming out of me, going into this blue thing. And the weird thing is, I wasn't thinking of anything. And yet, I could, I started to feel... (laughs) This is, this might get like too much information, but... I'm talking about it, because I I just thought to myself, I never realised that this was possible. So I started feeling my willy, like waking up. And I was thinking, why is that happening when I'm not thinking of anything? Because I was... I wasn't thinking of anything. All I was thinking was, what are these lights? But I was feeling, I was just feeling this feeling, which I can't even explain the feeling, but it was obviously so powerful that it was like waking my willy up. And the thing was, I was trying not to focus on anything other than these lights, but like the willy was getting bigger and bigger. (laughs) And I was thinking, what is going to happen here? It got so extreme, I couldn't handle it. And then it created an orgasm, which I thought to myself, this is insane. (laughs) Like, I I honestly never knew that a meditation could create that. But the thing is, I stayed inside of the meditation. And even after the orgasm, these lights continued. And so what happened was, I started talking to the lights, like with my mind, the same way that I talk things in a lucid dream it felt like exactly the same energy that is in a lucid dream and I was saying to this I was saying to this light I love you I just wanted to say I love you and I was saying I started saying to it show me something important because I felt like I don't know why but I felt like this thing was alive it's really this light was alive and it what happened was my whole vision started turning blue and it looked like there was a a black silhouette of like a forest at the bottom. 
it was like I was looking at a blue night sky with like the forest as just a black silhouette and it, it was absolutely beautiful and this green light continued going outwards and I think I spoke about this before but one time when I was doing when I had a Reiki healing session I had what I thought was green orbs but I realise now it was this same wave of energy so whatever was going on in this meditation is exactly the same thing that like my um, Reiki healer Rachel it's the same thing that, that she's doing and it was just this feeling of pure love inside of like this meditation and I woke up from that and I <laughs> woke up I was awake I came out of that meditation because that was the thing the whole time I realised I could have opened my eyes but because th- it did get a bit extreme that that's like sensation but I just stayed with it um, and then when I came out I just thought this is unbelievable and I was trying to work out what was going on and it made me realise something which is because I've said before I feel like everything in life is to do with positive and negative trying to find balance and so what I realised was um, like in a lucid dream I've, I've noticed that you've got this positive and negative which can manifest as say a demon or like an angel so you've got that but that doesn't mean it's good or bad it's just negative and positive and it felt like the same thing here where I looked at that and I thought that orgasm was like a positive energy which actually distracted me from being completely in the moment or yeah it did it distracted me it distracted my mind because it made me start thinking whereas before that I wasn't thinking and I sort of thought to myself, this is exactly the same thing that happens with um, like a negative energy. A negative energy creates a scary thing in, say, a lucid dream, and that will distract you and wake you up. And it's it, it's the same thing. So I just I came away from that thinking. Next time that happens, if it ever happens again, I'm going to try my absolute best to like somehow ignore the orgasm feeling because even though it's it was a f- like a beautiful feeling i feel like that was distracting me into a positive if if that makes sense so i think the whole point of it is you're try you've got to try and stay in the middle so that if any negative scary thoughts come in you can stay in the middle and not be distracted but equally if any positive nice thing comes in you can also not be distracted and this kind of goes into like the book of the dead and stuff where they talk about when you die if you can remain away if you can remain aware when you die you're going to go to this place where you're going to have like angels coming up to you trying to pull you into heaven and devils like trying to pull you into hell and if you can maintain your if you can maintain your focus and realize that both of these energies when you're dead both of these energies are basically trying to distract you if you can stay in the middle you're going to be able to get right through that to the to the, like the source whereas if you're distracted by it you're going to potentially end up going up to, off to heaven um, and lose your awareness i think it's about keeping your awareness and so I looked at that and thought it was kind of like, I think, it, I, f- I just feel like that was showing me that even positive, beautiful experience can be seen as a negative. So after that meditation, I now see both positive and negative things. I see them both as sort of distractions. And I think it's all about trying to stay in the middle and like find the balance point where you can have positive and negative, but stay in the middle it's just it, that whole thing that whole thing was just fascinating but so i i actually do recommend trying out this halotropic br- breath work if you can it's definitely doing something um but that's basically it really for this week's podcast you can find show notes and stuff at sophielawson.com and videos at youtube.com slash sophielawson 
and that is basically it for this this one. The inspirational quote goes to Will Terry from SVS Learn and it was during his creative composition course he said something that I wrote down in my notes which I thought was amazing. So this week's inspirational quote is be intentional about the choices you're making. Will Terry.